Welcome to my two minute course that is just a little longer than two minutes. I'm gonna do a quick educational video on improving bag mask or bag valve mask technique. Although not everyone will buy into this, there is some importance to understanding the basic parts of a bag valve mask. Here we see a relatively traditional BVM. It consists of multiple important parts for the provider to be aware of and becomes more versatile with added equipment. In order to put all the pieces together, we must have a basic understanding of the primary components of a bag valve mask as well as a couple accessories not often utilized. A self-inflating bag. This part of the BVM is probably the most self-explanatory. After being squeezed, it reinflates itself. Another thing to be aware of is that many of these self-inflating bags contain approximately 1200 mLs of air plus or minus 200. This is very important, especially when you find out that the average adult tidal volume is approximately 300 to 500 mLs. Just think about that the next time you see someone double fist in the entire bag while ventilating the patient. Then there's the face mask, another absolutely essential portion of the BVM. This should have air within the portion of the mask that is placed against the patient's face. Some BVM masks have a reservoir to put air into if the mask has been deflated. A pop-off valve is another component of a BVM, but is not found on all models. A pop-off valve is more often found in pediatric and neonate variations of the device. A pop-off valve, often referred to as a pressure relief valve, serves the purpose of preventing overpressurization of the lungs. Many pop-off valves pop off at approximately 40 centimeters of water. The exhalation port, often accompanied by a flow diverting cap, is where air is, well, exhaled. Knowing where the exhalation port is located and how it functions is important. Why? Because it is where the peep valve will be inserted. The peep valve is an underutilized tool that can be added to a BVM providing positive end expiratory pressure or peep. Able to be adjusted from 5 to 20 centimeters of water, not only does this accessory assist with oxygenation, but prevents absorptive atelectasis and can be utilized for pre-oxygenation and nitrogen washout when utilized prior to RSI. End tidal CO2. Yes, the same TP used for confirmation of endotracheal tube placement after intubation. This is another underutilized piece of equipment that can be used to determine the effectiveness of your ventilation and ventilation technique. If attached, it is attached between the bag valve mask and mask on the exhalation port. When attached to an appropriate monitor, monitoring device, a breath rate can be readily identified breath by breath. Trending the end tidal CO2 levels can also be performed and titrated to the desired CO2 level. When a PEEP valve and end tidal CO2 TPs are added to a BVM, more effective ventilation and oxygenation can occur and be more easily monitored. Don't forget about the oxygen inlet and reservoir bag. I won't go into depth here, just add O2. Here is another variation of the previously mentioned BVM setup. No, this variation of the device lacks a pop-off valve but has a pressure monitor in place of it. A pressure monitor is valuable and can assist the provider in delivering the breath to maintain appropriate breaths within the normal pressure range. According to many sources, there is this thing called a gastric sphincter opening pressure. This is a pressure at which the gastric sphincter leading to the stomach opens and air is pushed into the stomach increasing the risk of aspiration. This opening pressure is approximately 20 to 25 centimeters of water. Out with the old and in with the new, as long as you have enough providers. Two person thumbs up bagging versus the traditional C and E technique. The two thumbs up technique, according to research, many online resources and expert opinion has proven superior to the old standard or the C E technique. Now, I know there are many out there that will argue that the C E technique isn't ineffective, which is true, but the two thumbs up technique is far more effective at ventilating and oxygenating our patients. What is the downfall? You must have two providers to perform the skill effectively, which isn't always practical or possible. The optimal way to perform BVM ventilation is with two providers. A mask seal is held with both hands by one provider while the other provider squeezes the bag. When maintaining a mask seal with two hands, a double CE grip can be used, but the two thumbs up technique is preferred and reportedly more effective. This technique allows both hands to be used for displacing the jaw forward and results in significantly improved mask seal. Maintaining a jaw thrust is also essential in order to maximize oxygenation and ventilation of your patient. Otherwise, the air can obstruct and prevent air and oxygen passage. If you have any doubts about the effectiveness of this technique, try it on your next RSI. Your practice will be forever changed, I promise. Now that we're familiar with the two-person thumbs up technique, let's talk about how hard we should squeeze the bag. We know that one provider will be maintaining a very effective mask seal and providing a jaw thrust for increased ventilation, but what is the other provider's job? I spoke earlier about the approximate volume contained within a BVM and how it's oftentimes more than double the needed tidal volume for an adult patient. 
What this means is that we don't need to squeeze the entire bag. In fact, we honestly don't need to be utilizing two hands. One hand is plenty sufficient. The bag should be squeezed just enough to cause visual chest rise and fall, as well as producing end tidal CO2 waveform return. Be mindful of how fast and hard the bag is squeezed and, if a pressure monitor is present, attempts to not exceed the gastric sphincter opening pressure should be made. Are we done yet? Well, no. Hopefully I've been slightly enlightening and have given you some good insight on how to, in the future, more effectively ventilate your patients. But I have just a few more things to add and I'll be quick. The two thumbs up technique in most scenarios should be more than sufficient to ventilate and oxygenate our patients effectively. However, patients with large tongues and, how do I say this, floppy airway tissues may need more than just the standard two thumbs up technique. Adding airway adjuncts such as the OPA and NPA, and yes, I do mean adding both, can increase the effectiveness in ventilation being delivered. And the last thing I have for you is just this fun fact. 50% of volume is lost when laying the patient flat. To effectively recruit alveoli and ventilate appropriately, a heads-up position should be utilized.